You've been writing and talking about the data lake. What is that? Essentially, the data lake is the idea about putting all your data, whether it's raw or processed, into one repository that's kind of distributed and scalable. And so it makes data much more accessible to applications and people inside an organization. Now, I notice you've been referring to it as the data lake dream. Why is it a dream? What has to happen for it to become a reality? Well, some of the data lake rhetoric comes from vendors, right? Uh, and necessarily, that's some of it's aspirational. We're looking forward to a, a particular kind of architecture. And so when I first wrote about it, called it the dream, I was a little whimsical, right? <laughs> because, you know, we say things like data lake. Sure. And there's a lot of misinterpretation about what that means. You can't just put all your data in a pot and expect to build everything you need for an organization out of it. But the essential dream is to realize some of uh, the aspects of the big data technology, particularly being uh, that it's scalable, that because you're based on Hadoop and scale architecture, adding new data into the system isn't going to exhaust the resources of one of your particular servers, but that will scale out, which means developing new things uh, time after time comes at reasonable cost. And the other idea of things being accessible which will give you a lot more business agility the more readily available you can make data inside an organization. You know, one of the hardest things uh, for organizations to get their head around is getting data in the first place. You know, a lot of CIOs will be, great, I want to do data science, but I've got this database over here and this one over here, and these all need to speak to each other They're in different formats and so on. So in many ways, having data in a data lake provides you with a foundation which you can start to integrate data with and then make it accessible as a building block in an organization. So if the data lake becomes sort of the default model, what types of opportunities do you think that will create? Well, I think primarily uh, we're looking at organizational agility being a big one of them. But you know, the data lake as a model will be a part of a larger platform, really, where you have the data stored in a repository where it can easily be accessed uh, uh, and create new applications from it. But we're also sitting on top of a foundation of the cloud infrastructure, of DevOps, you know, a lot of the things that we do conferences about an open source that means organizations will be able to set up infrastructure for new applications more and more quickly. You know, at the higher level, we're looking at developing uh, in an agile sense. We're not looking at three year projects anymore. If we're working with data, we need to be ready for the fact that data is going to come up with new opportunities and present new uh, way, new products. You know, we may want to discover things and find out when you take things a different way. So. It's not just the technology, it's this combination of work in an agile sense. And also this idea that having data isn't just the end of the story. It's not just a big hole where you put things into. We get the raw data there, so we get the benefit of being able to revisit assumptions. But the idea is we put our process data in there and expose that uh, via, platf via platforms and APIs, data services essentially, back into your company so it can be a building block of new things. You know, the old way is you'd build an application A to do thing A, then application B to do thing B, and they all had assumptions about the data and threw different things away. But now if you can espouse the model that famously uh, Amazon has done, you know, they don't build any functionality without exposing it as a service. Well, think about that in a data sense as well. Don't create any data without making it available uh, in a controlled and, and useful way back to an organization. So I think done right, this is a powerhouse for uh, agility, a powerhouse for more uh, invention and um, really creating value from data rather than just seeing it as a cost center. Who are the avatars in the space right now? I mean, who's really driving it? Well, a lot of people have been speaking about Data Lake as one philosophy or another. You know, uh, Pivotal and Hortonworks have used Data Lake. Cloudera, I think, has had Enterprise Data Hub. But the, hu the idea is the same. And mm -hmm. it's definitely something that the Hadoop market has facilitated because of the storage layer, HDFS underneath, being kind of scalable and a uniform interface. But there's a lot of things to come on top. Um, you know, the people who say a data lake, uh, it's a load of rubbish that's just sort of pie in the sky, will rightly point out that you've got to think about security, uh, lineage. You know, you need to get your search strategy right because if you've got all your data there, how does anyone know which to make the best, mm. uh, which data to, d to, to actually get at? Sure. So <coughs> I think it's something the whole industry is going to, going to come to. And the reason I'm kind of getting behind it is because I think it, n it necessitates a change of thinking about the way you build applications. It's not just a tools issue. It's like you've got to look at the data and prize your data first and what happens to the data. You know, we talk about data as a raw resource. The data lake as a technology helps us to focus on it. And then we think about data, what we can make from it, how that can help the business, instead of thinking, I need to buy tool A, write program B, you know, use application C. 
Is there any other tool or technology that has evolved the way that Hadoop has? Yeah, I mean, I think Hadoop is really interesting because fundamentally what it has become is a distributed operating system for data processing. And so I think one of the best parallels in, in recent years with how Hadoop has developed has probably been Linux, which is obviously, uh, you know, came into life in a very similar trajectory. Hadoop mm -hmm. came along, people using it as cheaper storage, cheaper data warehousing. Linux came along, people were saying, well, uh, that's, a cheap, that's a free operating system I don't need to pay. But it made new things possible. First, when something is that free, you, you can create it so many, and use it so many more times, and you, you free yourself of a scaling capacity, you know, Google was built on commodity Linux hardware. Uh, but then also it can go places. Right now we're running cell phones with, with Linux and, and so on. And so we're starting to find innovation, this data processing going all kinds of places for all different kinds of applications. So I think the trajectory of Linux is a very good analog for Hadoop. That's interesting. Okay, so the first strata was 2011, is that right? February 2011, so, something yeah. like that? What's the most important change you've seen in the data space since then? Well, I'd like to, this is the one I'd like to be able to say. You know, um, I do think people realize, starting to realize that it's not a one tool uh, fits all solution. You know, at the very beginning we had lots of talk about NoSQL and then it was like, throw everything you know out the window, right? I think one of the most important realizations that the industry is starting to have is you pick the right tool for the, the job. Because data is subtle, some data moves fast, some data moves slow, some requires complex you know, natural language process, some is, is numbers to some. And we understand that actually there's never going to be one database, one thing you can get out of shrink wrap and expect everything to, to work. Your data is the image of your company, your business, and as such it's unique, it has you know, quirks and special requirements, and therefore you should choose the tools and the things you do to match that. You know, the old way of thinking about data is you know, faster paper, this is, this is just, you know, automation of existing process, regular, very predictable. In the big data era, we're using data to create value. It's very different. You pick the right tool for the, the job. It's about your business, and if you're going to be competitive, you cannot be cookie cutter. So I think in maturity about understanding there's no panacea, we need to be intelligent about what to do. Last question for you. What people or projects are you following these days? Well, we're particularly excited, probably no surprise, about the Spark. Um, project, and in particular because it brings the ability uh, of in, you know, more interactive query to, to users. And the fact is, the faster you can query data, the quicker you can start to understand it, the quicker you can change decision and do that feedback loop uh, that enable you, enables you to innovate. And so every time we get, I would say not to real time, but to human speed with data, that's a really important um, factor because getting value out of data is a human thing, essentially, and the more we can make big data workable with human hands, the better. Great, well thanks so much for being with us, appreciate it.